Hey crew, it's Ben, and I'm back with another reaction video. Today we're looking at something a little bit different. My number one day one gave me this video, and we're going to check it out and see what's up. This is a warning. A secret government takeover is happening now. And that most definitely sounds like some shit that I want to check out. So, let's go. Secret government takeover is happening right now. You most likely believe that your elected officials, the leaders, are in charge of your own country, right? And that the whole idea of democracy is that, you know, we the people have the power, right? Well, politicians and policymakers are supposedly working for the people who elect them. But sadly, the reality doesn't quite work that way. And more people than ever before are beginning to see this scary reality after being alarmed by the global coordination of democratically elected governments all across the world in response to the events of 2020. Now this has caused many to begin to ask themselves the very tough questions like, does our vote really matter? How much global cooperation and coordination- It matters on a local level. I'm not sure about the national level. And the, the, the last results were horrifying for that. But on a local level, you can you can absolutely, most of the time, kind of count on it being, right? Is go right? ...going on with each government. How much political power do privately run NGOs or non-government organizations have over our own nation's government? Too damn. Too damn much. And could there be a private group of central bankers controlling the world? Yes. So in this video, I'm... That's the day in my other video. I'm going to break down all of this stuff. I'm going to separate the conspiracy theories from the facts. I'm going to explain who's really in charge of the world and why your nation's government may not hold the power you think they do. So let's go. All right, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Moss and I make these videos to change the way you think about money because almost everything you've learned is wrong. And today, I have a very special video for you. It's probably going to be a little long um, and it's going to be special. I'm using my new studio in some ways we haven't done before. So leave me your comments and let me know what you think about this video. It's a lot of work. If you like it, maybe we'll do more of them. I don't like the Bitcoin. And before I jump in real quick, I want to let you know. Other than that, I think it's a great setup. Better than what I got. You know that um, this is some scary stuff. The world's changing really fast. And if you don't pay attention, it could be drastic for you. It could be disastrous. And so I'm having a live event, marketdisruptorslive.com. There's a link down below. Some of the best speakers in the world, Danielle DiMartino, Booth from the Fed, Luke Grauman, everyone's favorite, George Gammon, uh, Harry Dent, the father of cycles, and so many more, of course, myself as well. There's a link down below, marketdisruptorslive.com. Hopefully you come check it out. All right, now let's go ahead and just jump into this video. All right, so most people, most people think their country is run by their elected leaders. But what if they only controlled things on a small local level, but the big global moves were done by powers way over their head, above their pay grade? It sounds... We only get two choices, right? Like two real choices. You, we, I voted for all the Green Party and the Libertarian Party, and like, but they're not real contenders. Sounds kind of like a fictional James Bond type movie or something, right? I mean, you know, Putin, Zelensky, Biden, they're all making decisions on their own, of course, right? No. Well, what if I told you that might not be the case? I would agree with you 100%. They all went to the same school. They're all part of the same club, but I'm not in. Have you heard of the term NGO? That stands for non-government organizations, meaning they are not part of yours or anyone's government, and they were never elected. And if we're going to get to the bottom of breaking down who really runs the world, let's first start by looking at one of the most influential NGOs in the world. I'm talking about the World Economic Forum, or more commonly called the WEF. Now, I'm sure you've at least heard of the WEF, especially... If not, check out my videos. After one of their predictions for the year 2030 went viral, um, that you've probably heard, I've talked about it dozens of times on this channel. That's right, uh, they want us to own nothing and be happy by 2030. Now, I've talked about some of the key players. One of those key players, Yuri, I forget what his last name is, has been saying some very interesting things recently. We may be doing another piece on him, on the alternatives. That's their words, right? That's not mine, but more on this later. Now, the WF has come under even more pressure recently 
after being exposed on the Joe Rogan podcast in an interview that's been watched by millions of viewers. He had a guest on recently named Majid Nawaz. He's an Islamic man who holds a bachelor's degree in political theory. And, he, and when he was on the Joe Rogan show on the podcast, he left Joe Rogan speechless uh, uh, more than once. All right, as he exposed the plans of what the World Economic Forum and many other NGOs around the world are doing. Now, during the interview, he explained how the governments all across the world have been captured by a small handful of very powerful people working in these NGOs like the WEF. Now, I constantly tell you, quote, I take them at their word. So rather than me telling you what they've said, let's hear it straight from the mouth of the head of the WF. I'm talking about good old Klaus Schwab. So let's check that out. It's the same thing I do, right? Like I'm like, I'm gonna let them tell you. I'm gonna try not to interrupt as much as I can. I have to do this for copyright, for discussion reasons, but like, that's what I do. And I'm like, all right, y'all check out the science they're talking about. Hey, look at the science they're talking about. I have to say, um, when I mention our names, like Mrs. Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin, and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. But um, what we are very proud of now is the young generation, like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brazil, of uh, Argentina, and so on, is that we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, rece at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau, and I would know that half of this cabinet, or even more half of uh, half of this cabinet, are for our actually young global leaders of the world. Right? The John F. Kennedy School of Government there. And that's true in Argentina too. Well, yeah. Sorry, that's true in Argentina as well. It's true in Argentina and uh, it's true in France now. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the president, with the young global leader. But All right, so you heard. Yeah, we heard, heard but it straight from his mouth. He said, "Quote: Infiltrating the cabinets of governments all across the globe." End quote. All right, he said that with his hand-selected, hard-trained group of young global leaders. Sounds sort of creepy, right? Sounds sort of like, do I say? A conspiracy? <laughs> now, that word conspiracy gets thrown around a lot, right? But we can see the literal definition of conspiracy is, quote, to act in harmony with one another and enter into an agreement. Now look, people conspire all the time, right? Everybody acts in harmony towards a common end. We make agreements with each other all the time. The word conspiracy theorist is simply being weaponized so people who think critically for themselves are quickly discredited by being labeled a conspiracy theorist. All right. That, that is one of the devil's greatest tricks was teaching people that the, the words conspiracy theory means false because it doesn't. It just means that some people were conspiring and some people are theorizing while trying to figure it out. Now, Back to the WF. So who is this non-elected man, Klaus Schwab? What is the WF and how is he infiltrating the governments all around the world? Well, the World Economic Forum, the WF, was interestingly enough founded in 1971 by their founder, Klaus Schwab, who has made many appearances on this channel before uh, as our favorite James Bond villain. Now, what else is interesting about the year 1971, you might ask? Well. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, then you already know. It's the year then-President Richard Nixon removed the dollar and the rest of the world from the gold-backed monetary system and put the world on terrible to a free-floating paper currency fiat system. But for now, back to good old Klaus. Um, looking into his background, we can see Klaus's grandmother was in fact a Rothschild. Hmm. We could do a whole video on the history of the Rothschild family and their connections to the central banking cartel. So if you want to see that video, leave me a comment down below. But for now, I'm going to skip past that. But for now, Klaus Schwab has a degree in mechanical engineering, but also gained a doctorate in economics at the University of Fribourg, where he was taught by none other than the infamous Henry Kissinger. Now, it's important to note that Kissinger said, quote, Control the food, you control the people. Control the energy, you control a nation. Control the money, 
and you control the world. So it's no wonder where Klaus and the WF have gotten many of their ideas. Sounds very familiar to where we're at in the world today, right? Food shortage, energy crisis, financial reset. But anyway, back to Kissinger. Like the Rothschilds, he, he, he probably needs a full video to describe all the interesting connections he has. But all we need to know for now in today's video is that Klaus... I would be very interested to see that Kissinger video. I'm about to do a deep dive into Kissinger because I saw an interview that made me think that maybe I had been misled on Kissinger this whole time. Because in this interview, he was, he was talking about an appropriate level of force response. And they were trying to spin it as if he was talking about the most drastic level. And he was like, no, we have to be prepared for the most drastic level. But we, we react appropriately to the situation. It, it's, it's very different from the way that I was led to believe that he made that argument. Klaus, having connections to both the Rothschilds and Henry Kissinger. And I've never taken the time to look into Kissinger himself. Like I've always just, it's one of those things you just assume I'm going to look into that myself. Could probably explain why he was chosen as the man to create the WEF. Now, since founding it in 1971, the WEF has become one of the most influential NGOs in the world. They meet every year in Davos, Switzerland, where they host the top leaders in the world, Fortune 500 executives, CEOs, billionaire philanthropists, and government officials from all around the world. They were just talking about a cyber issue, like maybe that we would lose internet on a grand scale. They fly there in their private jets, uh, making plans and policies for the world, for you and I, because, you know, we're not smart enough to know uh, what we want in our life, I guess, right? Uh, now, that's a little bit about Klaus and the WF, but what is their goal? Now, Klaus Schwab has written a number of very interesting books detailing his vision for the world and how his how he's going to change it with the Great Reset. And I'm sure you've all heard many of the WEF's popular slogans and catchphrases that we all see repeated in the mainstream media today, like all on cue, maybe something like this. Yeah. Biden calls it Build Back Better. Build Back Better. Building Back Better. To do things differently. To build back better. We're going to build it back better and build it back better. In my plan to build back better, uh, start taking all the problems that have been created in right. education and mental health and start to, to build back. I've covered a lot of this. In a positive way. I have launched a booklet called Build Back Better, written after coronavirus. It's about building this country back better. <laughs> <laughs> growing conspiracy following it. It is called the Great Reset. An unprecedented opportunity to rethink and reset the ways in which we live. The great opportunity for reset. The theory even... All right, that's pretty interesting, right? All the world leaders yeah. repeating the exact same catchphrase, build back better. Now, first, that means that first something must be destroyed or torn down in order to build it back, right? Now, don't you think it's strange that all our democratically elected members of governments around the world are all using the same phrases made popular by the W-E-F-A-N-G-O? Now, it nearly sounds as if they're working for him. Oh, that's right, they are. Klaus <laughs> says it himself that he's- Oh, that's right, they are. Infiltrated governments all around the world. Now, I showed you the video where Klaus was bragging about this but what he called the Young Global Leaders Program. Now, interestingly, the WEF started their Young Global Leaders, we'll call it YGL, program back in 1992, the very same year that the United Nations launched two influential global initiatives titled Agenda 21 and the Sustainable Development Goals Program. Maybe that's just another coincidence, like the WF being founded in 1971, right? I don't know. Now, more on the sustainable development goals later in the video, but for now, the YGL is a five-year course where the members are mentored and trained by the WEF. And this is where the WEF aims to find suitable future leaders for the emerging global society. Or if we put it another way, the heads of the beast okay, this is, are the crowns upon the heads. This is where they can pick suitable people that can be trained in what to think 
and enforce specific actions and goals that the WEF once enforced. All right, now, who are some of these YGL, you asked? Well, the program has included a number of extremely influential politicians, business leaders, royalty figures, journalists, performers, Fortune 500 CEOs, and even prime ministers and presidents of countries who have all excelled in their fields since being handpicked by Klaus. Now, some of the most notable names and positions include the current prime ministers from New Zealand, France, the UK, and of course, Canada. I'm sure you're aware of that one. Actually, let's go over to the whiteboard and let me just show you how big and how deep this web is and see if we can connect some dots and make all of this make sense. Let's go. All right, remember the good old whiteboard? Haven't used this in a while. All right, so let's look at a couple of things from the World Economic Forum, a couple of these dots, to see if we can get them to make sense. So the first one we have right here is we have directly from their website, as you can see, the World Economic Forum. And we have some names you might be familiar with, like Justin Trudeau, for example, good old uh, Boris Johnson from the UK, of course, Jacinda, uh, Jacinda Ardine from New Zealand, uh, Angela Merkel from uh, Germany, and of course, Emmanuel Macron from... Not a single person on the list that I'd like to sit down and eat with. From France, kind of the who's who, all part of the World Economic Forum. And like people get so excited to meet these people. It's weird to me. And then we have something even bigger, which is more dots to connect, which is the young global leaders. All right, so again, Jacinda Ardern, Justin Trudeau, Emmanuel Macron, Boris Johnson. These are all leaders. We have uh, good old Mark Zuckerberg here. We have uh, the heads of two of the biggest uh, Cerveza sickness medicines, we'll call it that. We got uh, Pfizer, Moderna, they just happen to be there. Of course, the head of the WHO. Tedros, he's there. We could sit here all day and talk about this. Gavin Newsom, good old buddy from uh, California, the dictator wannabe. We got Pete Butendeg, uh, of course, and so many others. These are all directly from their website. All right, this is not some conspiracy. This is yeah. This is not. This is fact. This is true. It's a screenshot. Here's good old Klaus Schwab sitting up at the top of that. So you can start to see these dots are connecting. Now, we also have. Um, if you think Justin Trudeau is acting alone in Canada, that ain't here. As a matter of fact, we have five of the top leaders in Canada are also part of the Young Global <laughs> Leaders Program. We got Christia Freeland, Elisa Goldberg, Karina Gould, we got Jamit Singh, and Renee Maria Tremblay. All part uh, working together in coordination with Justin Trudeau in Canada. And when you start to see the world connected like this, these dots connected, maybe. Just maybe it makes sense as to why the trucker protest and the way Canada responded. Um, Speaking of truckers, anecdotally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna supply some anecdotal evidence for you. I was getting my son's haircut the other day, yesterday as a matter of fact. Uh, there was a guy in there, he was a trucker. He said he'd been driving for 35 years, he owns his own rig, and he's parking it. He ain't going, he ain't, he ain't carrying there another loop. Gas prices are too high, it costs too much, he can't afford it. He said he knows several other people doing the same thing. This is a real situation unfolding. Went the way it did. And it is 100% intentional. This is the reason why the prices are high on the, the fuel. Kind of showed their hands. Now what's also interesting is in light of the world. They need to concentrate you into camps and population centers so that they control you with that mark. News today, we have um, good old President Zelensky from Ukraine. The whole world's rallying behind Ukraine, right? Well, he's also part of the World Economic Forum. Tell me, why was an actor a member of that? Why was an actor part of the young, young leaders? It ain't got nothing to do with the stage being set today. And it's not just him, he's not playing by himself. As a matter of fact, we have good old Vladimir Putin as part of the World Economic Forum. Imagine that, same club. Now what's interesting is uh, we have the video of Klaus Schwab bragging about having Putin in. He's listed on the website as being part of the program. And then mysteriously, he just disappeared. Mysteriously disappeared, apparently they don't want him. Uh, it ain't good for making shit disappear. There's a whole playlist disappeared off of the, the 
TED Talks. Like, I was going to do a video on it, and I saved it. And I went back, and the whole playlist is gone. To be associated with them anymore, and it keeps getting better. The forum of young global leaders we have right here. This is again from their website. I'm just grabbing some screenshots for you. We have Alexander Soros, you know, good old George Soros, Open Societies. Uh, yeah, one of the enemies of Tulsi. Uh, it's very interesting to see Tulsi on there. The United States, I don't know how he's still. I didn't know about that. Walking around, but his son, of course, uh, Tulsi Gabbard. What's interesting about Tulsi is she's a Democrat, ran for president on the Democratic platform, but then everything she talks about, she sounds like a Republican or a conservative. We were just talking about that. Almost like she's playing both sides to get people together. On but being in the middle, like, I'm not opposed to people being in the middle. On the opposite, we have uh, war hero Dan Crenshaw from Texas, who is a conservative Republican. Yeah. But now he's talking and making policies like a Democrat. Interesting how these people are working both sides. Mark Zuckerberg, we have one of the Rothschilds, uh, and on and on and on. Now, if this, if this isn't enough to convince you that something's going on, dare I use the word conspiracy again, let's look in and listen to what happened in Canada as one of the MPs asked um, straight up who is involved from the Canadian government in this. Go ahead play that clip. All right, so what's interesting is that uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's being an asked a direct question. Klaus Schwab bragged about infiltrating the government. They asked the question we'd like to know, and they pretended like they couldn't hear. Oh, sorry, sorry, we have a bad connection. I can't hear you. However, <laughs> the people in the audience certainly heard good enough to call him out as spreading misinformation, which is pretty interesting. And it shouldn't be any big surprise. I think I played this clip before. Here's, of course, the PM of Canada, Justin Trudeau. Let's hear a clip of him. Hopefully. And so there, you hear it straight from his own mouth. Remember, like I said, take them at their word. He is praising the dictatorship of China. He wishes... They must have had to cut that out. He could be like a dictatorship in China. Now, I want to show you something. And this is... Uh, this is big here. All right. This is the way that I see the world being broken down. An org chart. If you've ever ran a business or been involved in a business, you understand. Ain't no SI involved here. What an organizational chart is. So up here at the very top of the org chart, we have the BIS. That's the Bank of International Settlements, BIS. The BIS is the central bank of central banks. So each nation has their own central bank, and then all of those central banks work together with the BIS. So at the top, we have the BIS. Below that, we have the central banks. Of course, that's the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, Bank of Japan, et cetera. You get the point. So the bankers are at the top here. This is a coup. The world has been taken over by bankers headed up by the BIS. Now below that, these are all policy makers. These are the ones that are setting the policy for the world, like ESG. If you don't follow ESG guidelines, then no money for you. As a matter of fact, Mark Carney said that companies that don't adhere to ESG will be what he calls, quote, economic roadkill. So the, the bankers set these policies and in conjunction with the World Economic Forum right here, among some other ones right here. And then we have the policy distributors. So that's the United Nations, the IMF, the IPCC. IPCC is what sets climate change, which has the carbon credits. Uh, we have the World Bank, the WHO. Uh, do I need to say more? So these are the policy distributors. So for example, the world, the bankers and the WF set a policy and then the WHO distributes that policy down to who? Down to the policy enforcers. Well, who is that? Well, that's the national government. That's your government. That's your elected leader way down here on the totem pole. If you ever wondered how the entire world locked down at the exact same time, it's because of the global coordination. The yeah, WF yeah. pushing it down the WHO, that pushed it down to the national governments and happened with a snap of a finger. Of course, then we have the policy propagandists. That might be the mainstream media, the fact checkers, politicians, um, on and on and on. And then finally, here's you and I down here at the bottom, the policy subjects. That makes sense. When you see the world like this, maybe all of these events that are going on right now don't seem so random. Maybe they don't seem like a black swan. Maybe they might seem a little bit coordinated. 
sort of like a conspiracy. Now, don't just take it from me. Let's dig in a little bit more. We can see directly from the WHO right here, they call this, um, in the 2005 document, Connecting for Health, the WHO, all right, they, they, they talk about the GPP, which we just talked about, the Private-Public Partnership. So they say these changes occurred in a world revised expectations about the role of government. So what's the, what's the revised role of government? That the public sector has neither the financial nor the institutional resources to meet their challenges. So the public sector doesn't have that. But a mix of public and private resources is required. So if we could just get big tech to censor information and distribute policies and we can get big tech to develop apps that we could use to put payment gateways in place you're starting to get the point all right let's get back like bitcoin back over the table and we'll go ahead and finish up what we're talking about here i know that everybody thinks bitcoin's going to be the savior and i'm saying that specifically because of this cup right here bitcoin is another digital currency and it is as easily trackable as any of the others if you do not believe that the very first thing that the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency did upon the announcement of Bitcoin was crack wallets, you're out of your fucking mind. If you don't think that that's the very first priority they had as soon as it was announced, you're out of your mind. They can crack your wallet. They are tracking your wallet. All right. Now... We all know these NGOs, they're very concerned with climate change, right? 50 years ago, in the WEF's third annual meeting in Davos, it was already talking about how we were headed for an environmental disaster and how we consume. They've been screaming at for years and years. All the world's reasons. And we are, but not for the reasons they think. Sources, despite the Mathusians having a long history of being wrong for centuries. Now, these NGOs, continue clinging to these outdated ideologies and thrust them upon the world and our governments. Fucking Davos. Now we recently did a video explaining how these globalists brought the leaders from around the globe together at the 26th climate change conference called the COP26. It was held in Glasgow in November and put together by the United Nations. Now here at the meeting, our world leaders were instructed by yet another NGO, the UN, that we need to find, wait for it, 130 trillion of money before 2050 if we want to save the world uh yeah let's 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 put a dollar amount on that let's find an extra 130 trillion no big deal right now just print it it comes from nowhere anyway to hear why i think the war on climate is just another excuse to print. they spend money like they actually have it print money check out this video i did on it editor go ahead and put that video up here now governments around the world have been pursued by these green agendas put forward by the WF and the WHO and completely disregarded the negative impacts. It's like having on its citizens in the form of rising energy and food prices. Now people are literally freezing to death in Europe, but they continue enforcing these green agendas. Why? Well, because they're told to by these globalists like the WEF. Because they want to concentrate you into camps close to the population center, so you're easily controllable. And they can tell you that you can't go out into the woods or the wilderness. You can only go to work. Who want more control over their people. And we mentioned Agenda, Agenda 21 and the Sustainable Development Goals earlier in the video. 178 governments from all around the world signed onto these agreements 30 years ago, which signaled the beginning of a more global governance structure. Our governments have already... That one just wrapped up. We're in the new one now. ...already made these plans. And while I don't have time to, to jump into this, all this in this video in the details um, around Agenda 21 and the Sustainable Development Goals, but if you want a separate video for that, leave me a comment down below and I'll do that. We can see another example of outside influence these NGOs have on our governments when we look at the health policies that were mandated by the WHO that our government enforced in response to 2020. Now, the president of Belarus... Y'all, I just got a spam text. That's just funny. I was Alexander... Lashchenko was I'm waiting on my kid to get home, so I had to check the text. But uh, bribed 950 million dollars from the World Bank. There's my kid. I will be back in just a minute. All right, sorry about that. It's funny how that happened because right after the text, he called me. Yeah. Anyway, let's go. 
to enforce lockdowns onto his citizens in 2020. Now, social credit scores are just another global policy being pushed by the IMF. The IMF suggested in mid-2020 that everyone should have a social credit score based on their web search history. Fuck you. And since that suggestion by the IMF, the talk surrounding social credit scores has certainly gained traction in many countries outside of China where they're already implemented. Now, what we're witnessing is a global race between nation states to implement a CBDC system. If we take a step back and ask ourselves, what's the big picture goal of these NGOs? I believe it's all about controlling every aspect of our lives and building what I'm calling movement and payment gateways. And we commonly talk about how the economic system needs to be reset, right? But what does it get reset to? Well, we have the IMF moving to implement social credit scores. We have the WEF declaring capitalism has failed and we need to replace it with stakeholder capitalism. We also saw the video of Justin Trudeau openly praising China for its dictatorship and communist ideologies. We can also see that our governments are moving towards implementing a CBDC to create movement and payment gateways that we all have to move through, just like what China currently has. So if we put... That y'all all have to move through. All these puzzle pieces together, it looks as if our West... They ain't built a gate yet for Pitt. Western governments are moving to implement a financial and governance structure similar to what China already has installed. They're using the guise of public safety to implement a digital prison that'll tax, track, and trace every transaction and conversation that we have. Now, the future could be bleak for those not paying attention to where these NGOs are trying to take us. They want to implement their idea of a great reset, but instead, I suggest we move towards the great escape. And really, it's the great race. Can they install this digital surveillance system before enough of us wake up and push back? Well, I'm here. I'm here. To wake you up. So we can win this race by pushing back, but I need each of you to spread these ideas. Spreading brush fires. That's what I'm doing. In the minds of men. Now, besides spreading information, what else can we do? Well, Christine Lagarde from the ECB said herself, Bitcoin is the escape valve. And we're going to stop right there. I want this to be the part where I say we're going to let it play on out, but y'all make sure y'all get back over to Mark Moss's page. Give him a like, share, and a sub. Throw him a comment. Let him know you appreciate what he's doing. I'm not going to let him do the Bitcoin bit, though, because I really do believe that Bitcoin is just as bad as all the rest of the digital currencies. I believe in real goods that you can really touch in your real hands. I like that. I don't like the fact that we have fiat currency. I wish we were walking around with gold in our pocket, but it gets bulky. So, uh, I, I'm not a fan at all of the Bitcoin bit. But other than that, this was very good cognizant information. Like, everybody gets something wrong, right? <laughs> all that he seems to have gotten wrong is the, the currency at the end. So, uh, Mark, thank you for this. I appreciate it. This was good stuff. I like being able to amplify just a little tiny bit these messages to new markets and new audiences that may not have seen them. All of the long videos that I've done today, have a, they tie together. This is all end time stuff. All of this goes together. Never forget that. To the crew, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate every single minute that you are here with me. And I am praying for you every single day. Till next time, it's been Pitt State. Peace.